As we discussed, exposure has its limits. It only applies to photon. It only applies in air, by definition. And um, it cannot be used for higher energy photons. We need to seek for other options. That leads to another important concept is what is called absorbed dose. Basically, absorbed dose is a, is a much powerful definition for quantifying radiation. So it, it does not have too many limits. It applies to all kinds of ionization radiation for both charged and uncharged particles. It applies to all types of materials and applies to all types of energies, all kinds of energies, lower or higher. So by definition, it is the energy divided by mass. So energy has the unit of joule, mass is the unit of kilogram. So one gray, uh, which is the unit of dose, equals one joule divided by one kilogram. Notably, uh, the one gray is relatively a large um, unit instead of one rotkin of, of the definition of, of the unit of exposure, which is relatively small. So when we have exposure and when we have absorbed dose, we have some more questions. Um, can they be converted to each other in air? Well, noted that air, uh, so exposure is only defined in air. <clears throat> and another question is that if so, can they be converted to each other in any other medium than air? In order to answer these questions, we need to learn another concept called kerma. And uh, so that comes to three um, important concepts of, of you know, exposure, absorbed dose, and kerma, and we want to know how do we convert each other. So all of these questions, uh, in order to answer them, we, we should probably revisit what happened when photon passes a medium. So this is a, a drawing of a basically a photon beam passing through a collecting volume, a medium, and it exits out. So as we learned in previous lectures, uh, there are uh, a lot of interactions happening inside and outside this collecting volume. So the first one is no interaction. Uh, the photon just passes through. And for those photons that do have interactions within this volume, <clears throat> we could have Compton effect. It generates the secondary electron, uh, which are in, in blue. And some of the electrons, for example, they get stopped suddenly. So it, uh, it produced the brass strong photons that exit out of this measuring volume. <clears throat> and we can also have the photoelectric effect that also generates the secondary electron. We can also have the pair production that also generates the secondary electrons. Um, and then uh, we could have some of the, um, the photons that are just purely scattered uh, deviate from its trajectory, but without uh, initiating enter any secondary electron or losing energy. They just get bounced back or bounce off and then exit out of this uh, volume. So um, we, we know that mass attenuation coefficient is a concept that attribute to all of the interactions happened within and uh, this volume. So it is one plus two plus three plus four plus five. So everything excluding no interaction is the mass attenuation coefficient. And mass energy transfer coefficient is the one plus through four. So we, for those energy transfer coefficient, we don't account for those uh, scattered photons and, and, and it, everything else inside this uh, region. We have this mass energy transfer coefficient. 
And then another concept we learned previously is the mass energy absorption coefficient, which is the one plus two plus three. So notice that these are the two uh, effects that actually generates the ionization, generates the secondary electrons and deposit energy uh, inside this um, measuring volume. And uh, the so so by by their definition, so basically um, the the um, the energy absorption equals the the transfer minus the Bramstrom photon lost because they exit out of this region. 